Keith Merker joins me now, CEO of WeedMD. Keith, welcome back. Thanks for having me. How is the harvest? The harvest is ongoing. Ongoing? Yeah, we started a couple of weeks ago and we are now sort of at that inflection point where things start to ramp up significantly. Yeah. Mother Nature is cooperating with the weather and the team is, is out there working diligently. How many harvesting. acres are you harvesting? We've got 27 acres. And is this hemp or cannabis proper? It is cannabis proper. Woo! So. Uh, THC and CBD. We got high THC, we've got high CBD, we've got a blend of both, whatever wow. suits your fancy. Okay, so now, pop my delusion. Is cannabis grown outdoor qualified for premium dried cannabis in the context of a government regulated store? Great question. And I will answer it a little bit, um, I, I will answer it like this. It is still early days. We are harvesting some great, Great buds. Our, our ghost strain haze strain, for instance, seven feet wide by seven feet tall. The apex colas are being harvested as we speak. They look lovely. They're wonderful. Mm. I wish that we were able to sell them as is, mm. by weight, as you do produce, mm. and say, and, and that day is coming. The day may come, but unfortunately, for the time being, we need to chop it up into little bits and 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 produce, you know, three point five gram uh, skews right. for the provinces and five gram skews for our medical patients, for instance. Um, but what we are seeing so far is is high high quality buds that we're that we're receiving from the outdoor field. Great. Um, it has yet to go through the full drying, curing, testing process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but we anticipate having a bumper crop not only from a yield perspective but from a quality perspective. Cool. And next year, how many acres will you cultivate? So twenty seven this year. We have the ability with our current property to get to one hundred next year. Okay. How many pounds of feedstock? does one acre of cannabis produce in terms of dried premium input? So our early estimates were just shy of a ton an acre. So- That's dried. That's dried product. A ton, 2,000 kilograms. That's- Two, 1,000 kilograms? 1,000, yeah. One, <laughs> so you were, you were converting to pounds perhaps, but right. yeah. So, uh, so roughly a ton per, per acre. Hmm. Um, we, it, it, and again, it's still early days for us for me to sort of put a stamp on that and say, here's what we achieved. Right. But I can tell you again, going back to those ghost train haze plants, we anticipate some of those coming out at two kilograms per plant. Wow. A thousand plants per acre. Wow. And how much do you get for a ton of cannabis grown indoors? It's an evolving industry. So I can answer that question in a lot of different ways. Hypothetically. So whether it's retail, whether we're selling bulk, whether we're selling trim. Mm -hmm. And you know, trim, biomass, for instance, in some cases we will sell to folks who use it for extraction. Sure. And they're paying these days not by the gram, but by the cannabinoid. So there's a very big delta in our revenue based on whether that trim product has 10% cannabinoid content or 20. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example. So it's very much a moving target. If I was to ballpark some figures for you, what we could sell at retail, we're getting four to five dollars a gram. What we're selling um, as as wholesale biomass, so extract grade product, uh, is closer to two dollars a gram these days. Mm. Okay. But again, with a lot of variability. Right. All right. Here's the question that the only question all your investors care about: How soon till you're profitable? Pending the outcome of this outdoor crop, oh. uh, we would anticipate having a, a very successful Q4. We're not giving guidance, and so I'm going to choose my words carefully, but a very successful Q4. And pending the quantity and quality of that product, that will carry over into 2020. Mm -hmm. With the 18 rooms we now have online in the greenhouse, our forecast would be to achieve a situation where this company is sustainable for the long run by mid 2020, if not before. Wow. Okay. So that's great. I'm <clears throat> reading nothing but doom and gloom and prognostications <laughs> of the sky falling in the cannabis space. Yeah. And um, I know that's not true. You know, that's not true. We've just got a simple case where the speculative market is now expected to deliver a, uh, a fully mature commercial EBITDA, which that's not how it happens. And yep. for some reason, the people in the cannabis, or the people investing in the cannabis space have forgotten that and have started to jump off of cliffs and out windows. Um, do you think that the cannabis uh, revenue picture for the whole industry is going to emulate what WeedMD is doing? Or would you consider WeedMD an outlier in terms of the level of success you're going to achieve financially? 
I've been saying it for ages, and you can look back into your archives because we've talked about this in a manner of speaking before. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, as we hit the end of 2019 and heading into 2020, especially, there's going to be, quite frankly, a lot of blood on the streets. There's mm. going to be uh, failures in this industry. Um, whereas in 2017, you could throw a dart at the wall and, and or buy the, buy the index and you were going to win. These days, you have to be more selective. You've got to pick the winners and you've got to select them and, and, and select them out of what is going to be a field where there are losers. Mm -hmm. You can get that if you'd like. Uh, that would not be appropriate. <laughs> All right. So um, finally, Keith, what is the uh, outlook in terms of production for 2020? So we're going to exit 2019 at about a 50 ton per annum run rate hmm. with respect to production. Wow. Uh, 2020, we have the ability to get to about 150. And this is just from the Strathroy site. And that is a combination of both the outdoor field and the greenhouse. We are at a position right now where WeedMD has approached this, I think, very strategically. We haven't gone guns blazing and built out as much and everything that we possibly could from a cultivation standpoint. Because as the industry evolves, cultivation um, becomes less important only from the perspective of there was once upon a time where square footage or licensed square footage or, or annual production really mattered to the market. Mm -hmm. Right now, what matters to the market is, to your earlier point, show me the money, show me the revenue, but also very importantly, show me a cash flow positive, sustainable business. And so we're running through those iterations right now of whether given now that we're in a more limited capital scarce, I'll say you know, there's more capital scarcity than there was back in the good old days. Um, so you've got to be more careful with how you spend it, how you allocate it across the organization. So to me, if we're looking at um, building out another greenhouse or allocating it towards um, making sure that our supply chain is locked down and airtight and, and super, super successful, I'm probably going to choose that latter portion versus more cultivation at this stage in the game. So we're running through those scenarios right now as we build our 2020 budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ever want some real excitement, come drop by the WeedMD War Room for budget talk because it is a thrilling, thrilling opportunity mm. <laughs> to see what goes on behind the scenes as sort of the sausage is made when it comes to the company. All right. Um, so again, we got the opportunity to get to a massive production footprint in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but I think more importantly is, is that we deliver a profitable company for our shareholders. You bet. All right, Keith, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks again for coming in. We'll talk to you again soon. Great to be here. Thanks.